Today we're working on our Chrysler Sebring convertible. The top was going up and down fine. And then as we were putting it down, it kind of had a little bit of a free fall right at the very end, just before it got all the way down. And then when we went to put it back up, the motor was running and it would only push the top about halfway up. And we were able to finish pulling it all the way over with our hand, but obviously the hydraulic fluid has gotten a little bit low. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take the interior portions apart to get access to the hydraulic pump and the cylinders and actually what to look for so you can know exactly what needs to be replaced or fixed. This is the convertible top cylinder and around the top of it is the most common place that you'll lose fluid from and this is actually visible without taking the car apart. By shining your flashlight down inside of the covey here where the convertible top is you can actually see the top of this piston of the cylinder. The top is sitting here and it's kind of just sinking down just a little bit more a little bit more we can actually see a little bit of fluid bubbling out of the top of that cylinder. So this is definitely where our problem is, where we're losing fluid. The actual pump motor is located behind this seat, and the hydraulic cylinders are located behind these side panels. To get this back seat out, you have to push firmly at the base of it, and there's actually a latch. Push in and lift up. Didn't say it would be easy. Next, there's two bolts at the very bottom edge of the back seat. Take those out. It has these hooks right here that go in these slots. So when you lift this thing up, this actually lifts right out of that slot. And on this side, it has this bar that kind of goes into this hook. So there's three of them across the back. And as you lift this up, it come, the seat comes right out. Next, you need to remove this plastic kind of insulation material. It actually has these little plastic thumbtack type things in the back. So reach underneath them, they can pop right up. And there's four of them. And then this whole thing just kind of folds right down. And there's your pump motor. First, you want to take out the inside screw out of this Velcro. It actually goes down into the metal framing here. I want to use a screwdriver. I'm going to pop this speaker grill, you know, off the edge here. It just has some retainer clips that, you know, just basically pop out. There's actually four of them. And there's a couple screws here that are holding this body panel onto the frame. Okay, and after getting those two screws out, it has one snap there at the bottom. You can see down there? Mm -hmm. It has this metal plug that goes underneath there. And once you get that out, then it kind of lifts up and out. But now the speaker is still going to be attached. The speaker clip has a little button on the back side that you have to depress when you try to pull it out of the socket on the back side of the speaker. Go through and inspect with your hand all the fittings to see if there's any oil that's leaking out from anywhere. You can do the same by running your hand down these hoses, making sure there's no oil that's been seeping through any type of leak in any of the hoses. But underneath this cylinder it's actually a little bit oily down here on this rubber insulation just take your hand and just rub down the bottom and the back side and if it comes back and you have this oil you know on it then you know that it's leaking right here on the top of the cylinder plunger and thus you need to replace the cylinders to remove these cylinders you have to start with the top in the up position and then by pulling back this inner liner for the convertible top you can actually get in and get access to the top bolt on the plunger Hey, we'll be back in a little over 60 seconds and we're going to pause real quick to see if you need any eternal repair. You might say, eternal repair? What's that? Well, hey, consider your whole life and all your life. Have you ever told a lie before? I have and I'm sure you have too. We all have. Also consider, have you ever stolen something even no matter how small it was? I'm sure you have and I have too. The whole point of where I'm going with this is those two rules, lying and stealing, those are two of the Ten Commandments in the Bible for which define what sin is. So if you've broken even one of those rules, no matter how small it was, that means you've sinned, and we all have. The punishment for sin is going to hell, or eternal separation from God. The good news is Jesus Christ came to this earth. He didn't lie. He didn't steal. He didn't do all these crazy stuff that you and I have done. He was totally without sin. He was sacrificed on the cross for my personal sin and yours. He went to the grave. Three days later, he defeated death, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross was he was taking the punishment for your sin and for my sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was, what he did, you submit to him as your Lord, and you repent. And when you do that, you can have eternal habitation with Jesus and the rest of the saints for eternity in heaven. You might be saying to yourself, hey, I'm a good person. Surely God wouldn't send me to hell for all the nice things I've done for people. But the truth of the matter is the Bible says, by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man or woman should boast. There is no amount of good work you can do to earn your righteousness before God. Only faith and trust in what Jesus has done for you on the cross. Hey, let's get back to our video, and I'll have a little more information on the eternal portion of this at the end of the video. With a ratchet, 
in a small extension and a 13 millimeter socket, you can get right in there and get that bolt out that holds the top of the plunger cylinder. Next, remove this nut that actually holds this bracket. Once you have the nut off, this bracket actually just pulls right off the edge like this. And you'll notice it has this pin here. And take note that there's some felt washers on both sides of this cylinder. Okay, with the top up and both those bolts removed, this cylinder actually just pulled right out of there with the extension all the way extended. Put a pan underneath this thing to be able to catch any fluid that comes out. Start with the top hose first. We have our 11 millimeter wrench. Once you start turning it, the flange nut will pivot on the hose. And as I'm taking this out, I'm gonna have my replacement ready to go right back in so I don't lose a bunch of fluid that's maybe in the hoses or back in the reservoir of the pump. One out, and one right back in. Very sure you can tighten these by hand before you put a wrench on them because you do not want to strip the threads on these cylinders. Now we're gonna go and remove the bottom one. Let's go get this thing put right back into the new cylinder. And there you go. As you're tightening this thing, you definitely do not want to hold on to this hose as a handle to tighten with your wrench, but yeah, you want to keep the hose straight with the cylinder. So what you want to do is take a second wrench and put it over the top of your hose head like that. Now you can actually turn this flange nut you know, without putting any pressure on this black hose. As you study this plastic grommet, which is in the end of this plunger, you'll notice that one side is totally smooth and the other side has this ring that's kind of around the center. And so that's actually a snap ring. And what you want to do is find a surface that you can push right in the middle of this snap ring. I'm actually going to use the trailer hitch on our little trailer here. And by lining that thing up right on that little spot right there, I'll push down and pop. And there you can see that that piece snapped right off of there. There's also a couple of foam washers that are underneath this thing. You'll find that they're actually stuck to the old casing and you have to tear them off slowly without damaging them. It's kind of hard to get these off in one piece, so if you think that's an integral part of this thing, you might want to order those before you start this job. So now we'll go ahead and reinstall them on the new cylinder. Put the foam washer on, stick it through there. Second foam washer, what's left of it, and then squeeze it and this will snap together. Just like that. Now it's time to add fluid to the pump and prime the system. So my pump actually has a rubber plug on this end, which I can add fluid to. I'm not sure that all models have this. And just pull these rubber plugs out of the body frame, just like that, just like that. And then you'll need to be able to tilt this side up just a little bit to get that plug out and to add some fluid to it. I found by rocking this plug back and forth, it seemed to work its way out without putting too much pressure on it and breaking it. There you go. It's probably about three quarters of an inch long. When I went to eBay, I bought my cylinders from this company called Hydroelectric, and they were very helpful. I talked to them on the phone just briefly. And definitely a very nice guy. I would do business with them again. They sent along with it some bleeding instructions. So I'm gonna run right through this. You can pause this at any point in time you'd like. So when you take the top off, it's like how are we gonna pour that into that little hole on the pump gear lube? They have a spout tip on them. Just and the threads on the spout tip are actually the same as what's on this Mopar bottle. We're going to use this spout that we got off of the gear lube. According to their instructions, I've got my pump nice and level, and I've got a rag under the end in case we lose any fluid. We can actually leave the rubber plug out as we're doing our bleeding procedure. We want to get this thing filled to the edge of this fill hole. Okay, you can see a little bit just came out when I tipped it a little bit, so we are right up there near the edge of that fill plug and that's where they determine that it's about three quarters full. Now one thing is you can leave the plug out while you run the motor to extend these cylinders. And as we start to get the cylinders out just a little bit I'm going to keep adding fluid to it so I don't get a dry spot and fill some air into the cylinders. One thing to be real careful of is these things will just lay right here. I didn't realize I was jamming the cylinder right into the top of this frame on the car and it was wedged underneath the floorboard of the seat. So make sure these are nice and clear before you start trying to extend them to bleed your system. You're supposed to run this thing back and forth several times with the plug out. The fluid level will change slightly as it goes close to the bottom or close to the top. So actually you can put your finger right on the very edge just to kind of make the little dam there to keep fluid from running out as you're working all the air out of it. And even at some points when you stop, you'll hear bubbles kind of coming through some of the hoses. 
But when you're all done, you should be able to do a full revolution up and down with the cylinders disconnected, you know, from the convertible top. Getting this reservoir plug back in can be a little bit of a challenge. And what I found is that by, by spinning it a little bit to get it started and getting it past that wedged shaped tip, and then continue spinning and pushing at the same time, and you'll see how it starts working its way back in there. And there you go. And put your motor back in position and press firmly on those rubber tabs. If you're having trouble, particularly on these back rubber anchors, getting them to snap back into the holes, you can take kind of a blunt tip screwdriver. This is actually a star screwdriver. Stick it in the hole right in the middle of the rubber plug and push down and it'll snap right into place. I was a little afraid to do that on this plug right here because if you end up pushing through the end of it, you're gonna have a lot bigger problem. Hey, as far as the eternal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure you know who God is, I encourage you to just to pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, if you are real and you are out there, I pray you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that prayer, he's going to answer it, and you will know he is real. At the point you know he is real, and you're ready to accept him as your Lord and Savior, the gospel is so simple. All you have to do is just pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of God. You took the price for my personal sin on the cross. I surrender my will to your will as Lord of my life. I repent of my sin. Thank you for loving me, forgiving me, and accepting me into your eternal habitation. That's just how simple it is. But the catch is that just saying those words won't do anything for you, only unless the heart believes the words that you're speaking. For the Bible says in Romans 10:9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. Hey, if you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot more information about your walk with Jesus Christ. That's eternalrepair.com. Thanks for watching.